Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Family Law Talk, presented by Kirk Stangy of Stangy Law Firm, PC. Stangy Law Firm is a family law firm in the St. Louis metro area with offices in Missouri and Illinois. Now, here's your host, Kirk Stangy. Welcome to Family Law Talk. I am Kirk Stenge, and welcome to today's episode with Family Law Talk with Stenge Law Firm. The topic is an interesting one today, which is the use of custody calendars. And this is based on an article on our blog, FamilyLawHeadquarters.com, dated December 15, 2014. So as a follow-up to the episode today, go to FamilyLawHeadquarters.com, look for the article dated December 15, 2014, and the title of the article is, Are Custody Calendars Helpful? That's the article, and we'll get into this topic more here in just a minute. But I'll state, as I always do, that the choice of a lawyer is an important decision that should not be based solely upon advertisements, and that the information you obtain in this episode today is general in nature, and it may not apply to specific factual or legal circumstance. Therefore, if you need legal advice, you should definitely consult an attorney who's licensed and competent to practice law in your specific jurisdiction. All right, well, on to the topic. Again, the topic is about custody calendars, and... You know, in child custody cases, uh, clients oftentimes ask whether they should keep a calendar, whether it's something that's helpful. You know, on the flip end, some clients think, you know, it might be a big waste of my time. Maybe it's not worth the effort. Maybe the court and the judge or the guardian ad litem won't be that interested in looking at it. So why bother if it's not going to be that important? And so, you know, that's kind of the debate in terms of custody calendars. Are they helpful? Are they not helpful? Are they a good use of a client's time in the midst of a custody case or on the flip end is not really worth the time and effort uh, in terms of tracking this and putting it together? Because it's a hard thing over a long period of time to be tracking dates and times uh, where visitation takes place, and, and, and there's no question that it's a lot of work. And so that's the question before us, and obviously like any, you know, almost any topic, <clears throat> in some ways, you know, the answer kind of lies in the middle when you're talking about custody calendars in terms of whether they're helpful or not helpful. Um, uh, but let me just state this, which is, I mean, a whole careful records, generally speaking, is a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing to keep careful records. You know, a lot of clients in the midst of a custody case, um, you know, they're just kind of adverse to providing information, adverse to looking things up like bank statements or tax returns. I mean, getting that information, a lot of clients – We'll take the position of why Why does this matter? Why is this helpful? Uh, does the court really need this? And, and there's kind of this uncomfortableness in terms of providing information. So for those folks, in a lot of respects, they can be kind of naturally adverse uh, to doing something like a custody calendar, where on the flip end, kind of another school of clients uh, that we've seen uh, over time, and these people are very organized, and when they come into the office, they've got notebooks and folders and things tabbed and put together. And they, you know, very type A uh, type people in a lot of respects. And to this, into this kind of grouping of clients, um, doing a custody calendar is just kind of an easy, simple thing for them. And it kind of goes without saying. And, and at times, you know, I've certainly seen clients who just kind of do it on their own without any direction for me. They just start creating a calendar and maybe they had been doing it for a period of time before they even came into the office. And so, uh, you know, that, again, so you kind of have these two schools of people, and, and, the, and the question is which way is right, which way is wrong. Um, as a general rule, I'll just state it, you know, having records in a lot of cases can be a good thing. It can be a helpful thing. Um, and here's why it can be helpful. You know, family law trials, divorce trials, custody trials can often go very quickly. Um, some judges will limit the time allowed for a, a trial or evidentiary hearing in a case, and that can be especially true uh, for temporary uh, hearings. In Missouri, they're called PDL hearings. In Illinois, they're called temp hearings. And so a lot of judges will limit the time uh, allowed for these types of hearings. And, and this is where a custody calendar in a lot of ways can be uh, theoretically helpful in some cases because you know, a judge might have little patience in terms of uh, a client testifying on the witness stand over you know, over a period of years in terms of what type of uh, custody time that they had. And so, you know, a, a custody calendar can be helpful in that if a, if a party can testify that they, they've kept this over time and they're diligent and thorough in doing it and they do it every day and that it's accurate, 
uh, in terms of the times that they had the children, uh, then what that can do is help set up a foundation to where uh, the custody calendar could be admitted at trial. And, and most judges will take a custody calendar if a client was meticulous with it, it's thorough, they did it daily, there's a pattern of them doing it, and they testify that, no, this is a thorough and accurate custody calendar. So if done right, if done regularly, if done thorough, most judges will allow this to be admitted to evidence. And so the hope then is that when the judge is deliberating in terms of making a decision, that they then review the custody calendar. So in, in, t- in hearings that are time-limited, um, and, and there's not a whole lot of time to put a lot of evidence on, and we're talking about long periods of time, a custody calendar can be useful if done well uh, in terms of admitting that to the court with the idea that the court uh, will take that back and review that custody calendar, and it can be helpful. Oftentimes, a, a custody calendar that can be well done as well uh, can be provided to guardian ad litem in advance of a hearing uh, to help make the case uh, in terms of what type of custody time uh, out there uh, the parties have been exercising what the pattern of practice is uh, in terms of wh- when the kids have been with mom, when the kids have been with dad, and whatnot. So uh, in that respect, hussy calendars can be very helpful. Now, uh, for parties who aren't very involved in the lives of their kids, uh, they haven't been exercising a lot of custody, uh, doing a custody calendar might not be helpful in that type of particular case. The custody calendar might actually hurt, right? If somebody does a custody calendar and it shows they don't see the kids very often, there's not a whole lot of regular contact. Obviously, in those types of inst- instances, uh, might not be uh, worth the time and effort, and could actually hurt um, some. You know, it might actually hurt a party's case. But uh, just state this as a general rule: most parties ought to at least consider the idea of doing a custody calendar, uh, ought to think about it, and it's definitely a conversation to have uh, with the attorney on your case in terms of whether it will be helpful in your particular case. So. Uh, Definitely have a conversation with your attorney regarding the particular facts of your case in terms of whether it's something that might be helpful or not. Uh, a couple other uh, uh, rules of thumbs in terms of custody cases where I think uh, in a lot of cases they make a lot of sense to do. Um, I referenced temporary uh, custody hearings in terms of uh, calendars being helpful. And let me just kind of restate why they can be helpful in these hearings apart from the time limitation, which is this, which is at the beginning of a divorce or the beginning of uh, a custody case, like a paternity case, for example, in most of these instances, there's no custody order in effect, right? So the parties file for divorce, they separate, uh, they have kids, for example, and out of the gates, there's no custody order. And so what a lot of uh, parties end up having to do, which can be extremely difficult, which is trying to work out uh, custody between uh, the two of them until the court can address the issue. Uh, and in a lot of instances, this can go on for a prolonged period of time, sometimes over a period of months, where the parties are just kind of on handshake deals, for lack of a better word, doing uh, doing custody between the two of them. In those instances, custody calendars can be useful in a lot of cases because uh, it can help show the pattern and practice to the judge in terms of what's been done. And then the custody calendar might also show, uh, hey, there's some deviations or changes uh, throughout time in terms of what was being done informally because maybe A or B or C didn't work. And so then there was this kind of change. And so uh, out of the gates at a temporary custody hearing, I personally like custody calendars because it can help paint a picture to the court in terms of what's been done. So that's definitely one instance to think about custody calendars. And, and then the second common one is cases where the parties have a custody order uh, but they've been deviating from it. And I've seen lots of these types of cases through the years. And, and so, in other words, you know, when a custody order is entered as part of a divorce or paternity case, uh, usually one of the key paragraphs in these custody orders is, is this, which is the parties will exercise custody by agreement, but if the parties can't agree, here's the default plan. And so a lot of parties will take that sentence, which means, look, we can deviate from this parenting plan as we see fit, and a lot of people do it. So they have a custody plan on paper, but they sort of put it in the drawer and do something completely different. And there's instances, in fact, there may be one party has like an every other weekend custody schedule. That's at least what's on paper. But maybe they've been doing 50-50 custody for a period of years because that's what's actually worked out best for the kids over time. 
Um, and so in these types of cases, a custody calendar can be useful because you come into court, let's say, and now you want to formally modify the custody order to make it 50-50 because that's what has been done over a period of years. In those cases, a custody calendar can be particularly useful to present to the court to say, Judge, look, we've been doing 50-50 now for two, three, four years. I've got records to indicate that this is what's been done. And that can be very persuasive uh, to the court uh, in terms of just seeing that on paper, seeing that on a calendar, that this is what we've actually been doing. And it can be a beautiful thing because in a matter of really uh, a minute, a, a good attorney can, can go through that custody calendar with the party, lay the foundation that this is fa- it's accurate, uh, it's been, the rec- records have been carefully done, that it's kept up with every day, and that the party... Uh, is testifying that, no, this is a truthful representation in terms of what we've been doing in terms of custody, and then you admit that into evidence. Uh, and, and that can definitely be helpful in a lot of cases. And so, um, again, you know, there's never a black or white answer in terms of whether to do a custody calendar, whether or not to do a custody calendar, but I just say it's, a, it's kind of a blanket statement, definitely something to at least consider, uh, definitely something to talk to your attorney about. In, in a lot of instances, it does make sense. Now, in terms of where to go, uh, in terms of uh, doing a custody calendar, if you're interested in doing it, well, uh, I mean, it's not that uh, complex. I mean, there's a lot of different places where you can keep calendars. So you can do uh, custody calendars for free, really. I mean, Google Calendar, you could create a Google Calendar uh, through an email account uh, designated uh, just for uh, custody purposes, and you could do it for free through, through something like Google Calendar um, Outlook. A lot of folks can can simply do it for uh, free through Microsoft Outlook, and there's lots of other calendar programs out there besides Google Calendar and Outlook that can be used. And then there's a lot of programs out there if you search the internet. And I'm not going to on this podcast endorse any one program over another. And frankly, I haven't used all of these particular programs. So I'm not really comfortable mentioning. Uh, the particular ones that that uh, seem to be the most popular, but if you just do Google searches uh, for custody calendars, there are a ton of them out there that folks could uh, really look at, uh, look at reviews for, and determine whether that calendar might be useful for their particular case. And then, of course, again, uh, it's pretty critical to get with the attorney in terms of what type of calendar you're going to be using to make sure that uh, – uh, did you know? Did you make sure that it's acceptable to your attorney that's helping you in your particular case? And so, custody calendar is definitely an interesting topic. Definitely something to think about. And, and on the flip end, I worry at times that um, a lot of parties aren't really contemplating the idea of a custody calendar. And then when they come into court to testify uh, about how custody has worked, a lot of parties come in disorganized. Uh, they're uncertain. They're unsure. They don't remember what took place. In a lot of cases, this can end up hurting a party uh, because they didn't keep careful records. So definitely something to think about, definitely something to consider, um, definitely something that in some custody cases can turn out to be uh, a nice tool for a client in terms of presenting their case to the court. So uh, that is the topic here today, use of custody calendars. Again, as a follow-up to the episode today, go to familylawheadquarters.com. Look at the article dated December 15, 2014, titled, Are Custody Calendars Helpful? All right. Well, thanks for tuning in today. Stay tuned for our next exciting episode of Family Law Talk coming up. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening to Family Law Talk with Kirk Stenge. Visit StengeLawFirm.com for more about today's topic or to put Stenge Law Firm to work for your family today. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.